It is true. I am now a world-class, record-setting, extremely handsome speedrunner. What game do I have this record-setting time in, you might ask? Is it the very popular to speedrun Super Mario 64, or Celeste, or Portal, or is it even one of those games where the goal is to sleep with someone as fast as possible? No, the answer to all those is no, it is even better. The game I have a number one speedrun for is... Ultimate Racing 2D. Now know what you're thinking. What the fuck did this idiot just say to me? What the fuck is on my screen right now? And why the fuck did I click on this video? Just hold on, alright? I swear, it gets interesting. I've had the idea to do a speedrun on this game for a few months now, but wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted to do. You see, this game has a sequel, Ultimate Racing 2D 2, which has workshop support, making the game almost infinitely replayable with custom cars and tracks to keep you busy. This game, however, does not have that, which kept my speedrun options pretty limited. I decided to do a run of event mode, basically this game's career mode, and see how fast I could blaze my way through. I was 95% sure that this game would not exist on speedrun.com, but I figured I would do a quick search just in case. To my surprise, every track in the game is represented with their own records, and there are also categories of doing a complete run through of every single track. With 53 total players submitting over a thousand runs, I was shocked to say the very least. I did not see event mode listed though, and a look through the forums showed that I was not the first to have the idea of an event mode category. Continuing to browse through, one thing in particular caught my eye. When going to the full race category and clicking the down arrow to show more, an Indy 500 option showed up. If you don't know what the Indy 500 is, it is probably the most popular motorsport race in North America. I mean personally as a NASCAR fan, I prefer the Daytona 500 more, but to each their own. Now the Indy 500 is 200 laps in real life, and a look at the speedrun rules for this category shows that this race is no different. 200 laps around an Indianapolis-like track in the game with normal tire wear and a difficulty setting of at least 70. The game has a max difficulty of 130, so the AI are meant to be pushovers in this race. The only real challenger should be the clock, or more specifically, AE Force. With a time of 42 minutes and 12 seconds and an AI difficulty of 71, they were the top dog in this run. And on mobile for Christ's sake, that's impressive. This game is on a bunch of different platforms like PC, Switch, even Xbox One, but for the individual race speedruns with no loading times, the platform does not matter. I watched AE Forces run on YouTube and noticed something. The recommended pit strategy said to pit anywhere from 12 to 19 laps for new tires. AE Force was pitting every 20 or so laps. Towards the end of their 20 lap stint when their tires were worn out and had hardly any grip left, they were really slipping around the racetrack which seemed to me to be a big time loss. This seed of doubt in my mind about the best strategy had me toying with the idea on how to potentially improve the run. But first, I had research to do. I set up two 60 lap races, each with the normal tire wear and a 72 difficulty to see if my hypothesis was right. I thought that pitting every 15 laps would be more effective than every 20 laps in a 60 lap race. That meant one extra pit stop for the 15 lap strategy, but I thought that having the new tires for those extra 15 laps would prove faster than slipping around for 15 combined laps on the 20 lap strategy. As it turns out, the strategies came out to a similar time, but there was a clear winner. Even by removing 2 seconds off of the 15 lap strategy race because I hit the middle barrier coming to pit road for one of my stops, I was still 2 seconds behind the 20 lap strategy race, which meant that my hypothesis just got slammed shut. AE Force had the right strategy, which meant that I was just gonna have to outrace them if I wanted the record. The only problem? In the two 60 lap races, my lap times were very inconsistent, especially on worn tires where I would slam the wall every other corner. But hell, I got nothing else to do, so why not try? Getting into the nitty gritty details of this run, we will start with car choice. AE Force is using a car called Sports Prototype A. I am using one called Formula Speedway. They are basically the same, and both are allowed, but I just like how the open wheel cars feel in this game. Next, AE Force is using 71 difficulty. I chose 72, which may make my run a little easier, as the AI shouldn't be slowing me down as much, in theory. Also, I have set all the cars in my class, including my own, to have max stats in top speed, acceleration, and grip. AE Force did not boost their competition, but they did boost themselves, so I think we are all good there. The only other real important rule for this run is that you have to start last, in a field of 20 total cars. With the rules out of the way, it was time to begin. So I booted up the game, double checked my settings, and watched the green flag wave. Is green. And we are off on our 200 lap journey. The first big hurdle is getting the lead. With this heavy traffic at the start of the race, not getting through efficiently will put us at a disadvantage right out of the gate. Now again, winning this race is not necessary, but sitting behind slower cars will not do us any favors. After slicing and dicing my way through the competition, I had the lead by the start of lap 5. My new objective was to get into a rhythm and begin clicking off some solid laps. 
I settled down and did just that before I began creeping up on the last place cars, which is where the fun really begins. This is how the speedrun will be won or lost, by using the lap cars to boost ourselves down the straights. Not sure what I mean? Let me explain. This game, in certain scenarios, with certain cars, has a draft effect. With most of the open wheel cars and these three specific ovals, you can simulate a super speedway race in NASCAR, or even the real life Indy 500. If you're not sure what the draft is, or a slipstream as it's called elsewhere, think about going outside after a big snowstorm. You and a friend are going out to shovel a path to your car, and your friend starts shoveling first with you right behind. As they clear a path for you, it becomes easier for you to walk. Same as the draft. The car in front is cutting through the air, doing the hard work, while the car behind gets to reap the reward of the other car's work by having less resistance on their own car. The more we can draft up to other cars in this race, the better off we can be. That tangent out of the way, we can now focus on our first upcoming pit stop at lap 20. Where drafting is how this run can be won, a mistake entering pit road can be where the run ends. I was determined to not do what I did in my 160 lap run and hit the entrance to pit road, as that would surely be a run killer. So I eased on a pit road my first stop and got away without any hitches. Only 8 more times to go. At this point in the race, nothing really happened for a while. It's hard to make this look engaging because I'll be honest, it really wasn't. But I ran some laps, feuded with a few people, ran off course a few times, and ticked off another 100 or so laps before something interesting finally occurred. At lap 136, my exit off of 2 was abysmal, the worst I've probably ever had in my life at this track. That was a few seconds gone at least as I got back up to speed. But I had no way of knowing how I was doing overall as I purposefully chose not to set a stopwatch either on my phone or on my screen. I was going to be surprised with my result when the 200 laps concluded whether I succeeded or failed. I didn't have to wait long until my next scare. Just 3 laps later on extremely worn tires, I got in too hot this time going into turn 2. A car got to my inside and upon me gracing the left side of their car in my slide, they got loose up the track and kicked me in the wall for a big loss of time, bigger than the blown corner 3 laps earlier. It wasn't until the end of my next stint however before things started to get a little too close for comfort. On lap 157, my dumbass teammate, they are only a teammate in name and car color only, I could not care if this AI driver lives or dies. They were on my outside as I was passing them when suddenly they took a hard left hand turn in the entrance to turn 3 and tried to force me down pit lane 3 laps too soon. I fought back and managed to stay on the track with only a little time lost. That wasn't all the excitement for that stint though as 3 short laps later I had the closest call of my run. I was coming to pit road, intentionally this time mind you, when I got a wee bit aggressive trying to make up time and just skimmed my way in. Had I hit that wall head on and bounced outside of pit road that could have been a run ender as I would have had to do another full lap with the very low grip tires. Thankfully we got away with one and I made a mental note to take my last stop very easy next time around. The final notable event in my race other than the finish happened in my final stint on lap 187 when I drove in the grass twice in the same corner which was more embarrassing than it was costly. Eventually, after what seemed like forever, I hit one lap to go. For my worn tires, I had a decent enough corner for turns 1 and 2 and had a flawless 3 and 4 to power off and take the checkered flag. The race was over. I had won, but that was irrelevant. Were my efforts enough, or did I pile up too many mistakes? Was I the new Indy 500 king, or was AE Force destined to stay at the top? Well, I mean, you saw the title of the video, I wasn't lying. Heck yeah, we beat it! With a 4140, I now hold the number one spot for this specific speedrun. I know what you might be thinking. Yeah, you have the top spot by beating two fucking people, and you would be right. This leaderboard is not exactly bustling with activity. I mean, the Indy 500 alone has not been attempted in over a year. I guess I should have taken that as a sign, huh? Hi folks, Seawolf from the future here. This video was recorded and edited in July 2023. Now, I can't be certain when you are watching this, but I can almost guarantee you are not still watching this in 2023. Uh, but yeah, on speedrun.com, uh, this game's dead. 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 I mean, I'm not upset that my run will forever be in limbo because nobody, including myself, wants to sit through 40 minutes of this. I was gonna wait until my run got accepted to post the video, but obviously that is not gonna happen. So you just have to trust me that I have the number one spot now. And I guess that's all I've got now. Uh, the full uncut run will be linked in the description if you wanna, you know, watch that. It's 40 minutes of me driving around without commentary, but if that's your thing, go for it. Subscribe if you want, uh, and I guess, bye-bye.